With just four games left in the regular season, the Chicago Bears are no closer to finding their next home. The team has proposed building a $50 billion stadium and entertainment complex on the site of the closed Arlington Heights racetrack. But the project has stalled while the team tries to negotiate property taxes for the site, and the governor has made clear he doesn't want the state to have to pick up the check. But a new proposal first floated last week could move the team a few hundred feet from Soldier Field, the south parking lot next door. And our next guest thinks it could be a chance for, to keep the team right here in Chicago. State Representative Cam Buckner is a Democrat who represents parts of South Shore, the South Loop, all the way up into the Gold Coast. He's a former Illini football player and a key negotiator of the Wrigley Field renovation deal. Representative, good morning. Good morning, Timon. Thanks for having me. We're glad that you're here. There may be new hope for the Bears to remain in Chicago with the team exploring that South parking lot. For a while, it felt like Arlington Heights was a foregone conclusion. What's changed over the last year with this situation? I think the two biggest things are that we have, number one, a, a new mayor in Brandon Johnson who has been clear-eyed clear uh, about the Bears situation and has come to uh, the team um, you know, willing to negotiate in good faith. And I also think that the Bears' new president, Kevin Warren, has also showed, shown that he is committed to trying to find a way to make this work, not just for the Bears organization, but for the city of Chicago. So those are the two biggest factors that, that have us today in a different position than we were just about a year ago. Do you worry at all that Chicago is being used to sweeten the Arlington Heights deal? Well, listen, I, I have had concerns for a long time about leveraging um, the power of uh, staying in Chicago to get a better deal someplace else. Um, but I, I do believe, once again, this, these are good faith negotiations. Uh, what I've said over the last couple of weeks is that uh, if the Bears are truly committed to the city of Chicago, if, if they have um, made it their business, that they will play within the confines uh, of Chicago proper, uh, then we need to stop talking about places like Naperville uh, and, and Country Club Hills and, and Arlington Heights and figure out what we can do um, in, in conjunction to make the city of Chicago work. As the Bears explore the lakefront, will building on the lakefront survive a challenge from friends of the parks? Well, I think that, that remains to be seen. Listen, I, what I've said about this is that if we can put together a public-private partnership that makes uh, the Bears staying in Chicago make sense, then it has to be forward-facing. It has to be done uh, in, in within the public sphere. And so people in Chicago have some say-so. This can be something that's done behind closed doors. And we have to be able to work with organizations like the Friends of the Park uh, in this space. What I do know is that the Lakefront Protection Ordinance um, prohibits um, private development, new private development, which is why I've talked about a public-private partnership that would make this worthwhile, not just for the organization, but also for the people of the city of Chicago. I wanted to talk about college sports with you because you've introduced a student bills of, bill of rights and anti-hazing legislation. It would provide student uh, athletes with uh, sports-related health care after they leave school. Is this for life, and how much would that cost? Well, not, not for life, uh, just for five years after their, their playing days are over. Um, what, what this bill does is it, it addresses the issues of, uh, of compensation, of health and safety standards, of educational standards. Uh, what we know is that uh, college athletes need to be able to be safe and be protected, not just on the field, on the court, uh, on the pitch, uh, but also in their locker rooms. We know we've had um, some hazing scandals uh, within our state recently. And so what we did here uh, with, with this bill is that we're not waiting for uh, the NCAA to find religion on this issue. We're not waiting for Congress uh, to all of a sudden make this a priority and move forward. We want to make sure that student athletes in the state of Illinois uh, have uh, the protection that they need, that there will be uh, no issues of retaliation if they do uh, uh, become whistleblowers, and that you know we, we are wrapping our arms around them in, in a way that's going to be beneficial. Well, the anti-hazing piece, Illinois schools might argue that they already have protections against hazing and abuse. What more could this commission that you're proposing to monitor college athletics do to help students? Listen, what, what we're doing is not enough. I think that's been very clear, not just from the most recent uh, allegations and the most recent scandals, but uh, there's a history uh, of untoward things going on across athletic programs within this state. And so uh, we're trying to be proactive. But what we're trying to do through this new hazing legislation as well is to strengthen protections, to make sure uh, that the power structure that makes many student athletes not want to come forward when things uh, are going on in those spaces, that that power structure does not uh, prohibit them uh, from, from doing that. And so, um, you know, we're asking, we're, we're, we're in this bill putting forth uh, a mechanism where each school has to hire an independent ombudsman 
uh, to be that go-between between between these student athletes and and the administrations uh, to once again give them the protections that they need. We've got about 10 seconds left, but before we let you go, got to ask you about this. The Bears' defense has looked good, and the offense seems to be coming together. How many wins do you think the Bears are going to finish with? I think they'll pull out two or three more. Um, You know, I I was a, a little bit nervous earlier in the year on where they were going to be, uh, but it seems to have pulled it together. Uh, I like the chemistry, and I like the way that the team is clicking today, and so uh, hopefully they can keep it up. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Somewhat optimistic after a terrible start. All right, State Representative Cam Buckner, thanks so much for your time. So to come this half hour on WGN TV Political Report, it's expected to bring tens of thousands of Democrats to Chicago next August with an estimated $100 million impact on the city. We're joined by two members of the 2024 DNC Host Committee after the break.